Now, 22 is the challenging one. It says, imagine you have 50 grams of this and 100 grams of that. How much product can you make? So you're going to have to run two different dimensional analysis problems. So start the first one with the first bit of information given to you in the problem. 50.0 grams of N2H2, or NH4 rather, times grams N2H4. Now we're trying to figure out how much, how many grams of N2 we could make. So that's going to go on the top. It's kind of like saying you have a bunch of bicycle parts. Let's figure out how many bikes you can make from each group of parts. So let's say we have 50 seats. How many bikes can you make out of 50 seats? Then if they gave us pedals, maybe we got 192 pedals. From the 192 pedals, how many bikes can you make? From the 5,000 frames, how many bikes can you make? And so forth. So what we're looking at right now is each one of these reactants, and we're going to figure out how much of this product we can make from that. So that's the setup for the first one. The setup for the second one is going to start with 100.0 grams of O2. You're going to put grams of O2 down here. On the top, you're looking for grams of N2. And then you're going to compare from your table and figure out what the numbers are. Oops. So we're looking at grams of N2 right here. It's not written out, so I'm going to go and figure out what one mole, because there's only one mole, what one mole equals to, equals on the periodic table. N2, so that's 14 of 14, 28.0 for that. So then I'm going to go back here, and 28.0 is going to go on the top for both of these. 28.0. 28.0. And then on the bottom, grams of N2H4 and grams of O2. So let's go back up to the top. 32. And then what else do we have? O2. So that'll be right here. It's not figured out yet. So we have one mole times two. So that's 32.0 grams. So 32 and 32. Let's go back. It's nice and easy to remember. Let's fill them both in and 32.0. All right, so do your math and let's figure out what numbers you get. Remember, we're solving for what mass of product for both equations, grams of N2 on top, grams of N2 over here. This one's gonna allow us to make 43.8 grams. This one's allowing us to make 87.5 grams. Now, the, quest the question is, which one are you gonna give as your answer? Are you gonna say you can make 43 or are you gonna make say you can make 87? Well, the correct answer is 43. You can only make 43. You can't make 87.5. If you try to even make 44 or 45 grams, you can't do it because you only have 50 grams of this reactant. This only allows you to make that. If you try to make any more than this, you're not going to be able to because you don't have enough of this stuff. So it doesn't matter how much of this. This is an excess. It doesn't matter how much of that you have. Um, what we're concerned with here is running out of N2H4. This is our problem right here. That's our big problem. So this is our limiting reactant because we run out of that one first. And then 23 goes hand in hand with this question. It says, in your own words, describe the difference between the limiting and the excess reagent. The limiting reagent is a substance that you run out of first. Excess is one that you have plenty of. So it's kind of like saying, how many bikes can you make if I give you 5,000 frames, but only four wheels? If that's the case, then you're only making two bikes, assuming they're normal bicycles. If you have four wheels, you're going to put two on each, and you can make two bikes. After that, you run out of wheels, you can't make any more bikes. So this is going to limit you. Your wheels are going to limit you, whereas your frames, remember I said you had 5,000 frames? Your frames are going to be in excess. That's your excess reactant because you have plenty of frames. You're not going to run out of them. OK, percent yield. Percent yield is basically saying we do all the stoichiometry. We come up with these wonderful numbers. And this is, in theory, what we should make. This is what we should produce, what we should react if everything was perfect. If none of the product was lost, if everything reacted perfectly, if there were no impurities, da 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 da, da. So what should we get based on this wonderful math that we're doing? And then we compare it to what we actually did get in the lab. So you're going to take what you actually got divided by what you should have gotten. And it kind of works the same way when we grade you on test quizzes and so forth. Let's say something was worth uh, 25 points. I expect you to get all 25 points. But let's say you fall a little short. Let's say you only get 23 points. So we take 23 divided by 25, what you actually got divided by what you should have gotten multiply it by 100, 
and that gives you a percentage of 92%. You got 92% of what you should have gotten right, right. We do the same thing in, in chemistry. We say, what should we get? So it says, imagine after running the reaction, you produce 45 grams of water. So that's what you actually did. So that goes on top. And then it says, based on your stoichiometric calculations, you expect to produce, this is what the math said you should. You should have gotten 53.5 grams, but you only got 45. So we're gonna divide the two, multiply it by 100, and we're gonna get 85% yield. We're gonna get 85% of what we should have gotten. Okay, just like on a, on a assessment here, you got 92% of what you should have gotten. Okay. The smaller number, by the way, should always go over the bigger number. Um, there might be some exceptions where there's impurities and you end up with a higher number on top, but for us at this point, most of the calculations you're gonna get is gonna be smaller number over bigger number. What you should have gotten is usually gonna be less than what you uh, did, or I'm sorry, what you did get is usually less than what you should have gotten. Make sure it makes sense. Ask yourself, are these two numbers pretty close? Yes, then you should have gotten uh, 85. If for some reason you got maybe 15%, does that make sense? Is 45, which is almost 50, is 45 only 15% of 53? And that would you would hopefully realize that that's not even close, so that's wrong. So make sure you think about your answer, see if it makes logical sense.